Well, I feel very happy for living in this neighborhood. I really think the whole city should be like this. It's a slower rhythm of life. You rediscover your area and your neighbors. They're finally able to reconquer this, the spaces of the city and they truly make the space much more democratic. We have detected a, a number of problems that we had in Barcelona and we have too much traffic, we have a lack of the green spaces. With the Superbox project we are trying to reclaim back some space that we now use in bike cars and to put it back to all those streets that are more linked to what pedestrians and people and a human scale city needs. It was September of 2016. Uh, the City Council starts the Superblock with public audiences in the street. But when a part of the neighborhood said that this was not a good idea, that's how it was born our association called Collectiu Superilla Poblanou to defend uh, the space and to give ideas to have a more public and good space. It is composed by nine blocks. It was a proposal that we started with a tactical uh, urbanism. We changed it completely the layout in which uh, this space was used. Superblocks are a very clear uh, example of tactical urbanism. You know, they're using short-term and temporary design elements that can be removed, that can be tweaked, but are really testing out this concept of the superblock. Cars are still here and they are welcome, but they must know that this is another part of the city, that each person has the same right to be there. They must respect us. Everybody, not only the neighbors, can drive in this place, but it's not easy to cross in a direct uh, lane. So in theory, people that are not doing anything inside this area, they are not driving here. What happened in Barcelona is that they chose this place, that it was um, social housing, all the, all the area in which the first super block is. And that, of course, creates this safe environment that um, prevents gentrification. When you make some interventions like this one of uh, improving the public space, uh, one of the bad things of the complaints is that the prices of the housing are going higher. But well, in this case, because we are living in social housing, it's not, it's not possible. So it's very important for municipalities that when they make these interventions in the public space, they make sure that the people can continue living there. This kind of space is really inspiring because uh, we are changing the, the public space for other users. We are not only planning for mobility, uh, we are planning for using the space, meeting people, staying, uh, having sun or playing. First thing that needs to happen is the changes in mobility. So this means that we need to change the directions and the, and the through traffic and you need to, to take out some of the parking space available. And because you don't have that many traffic and that many cars and that many cars parked in the street, you can start like thinking uh, to have the, the space used to other uses. The intersections were 90% reclaimed with playgrounds, street furniture, benches and trees and places to hang out. And that's the kind of thing you just don't think about when you are walking around a neighborhood, is that in the middle of these streets you could be doing the same things you're doing in, in park space. All of these discussions on, okay, different times of the day, different activities, different people talking about it, needed to be done really fast because uh, people perceived really fast that, that that was for them and they could use it and they were looking forward and it had to be adapted to their needs. And we've got uh, playgrounds, we've got tables and, and places to sit, and people are just using the, this public space both in the, in the weekend and also in the days. I mean, also for office, uh, people working at offices. You might have seen people taking care of elderly people or people who have disabilities, who, um, you know, they suddenly find a completely accessible area uh, that they can move around. So that's really good for them the whole day long. This was used to be a street with a really wide space for, for cars, with re really narrow uh, sidewalks, and now we have this pacified uh, space where uh, still cars can go in, but really low speed, and uh, we have some uh, gardens and uh, 
places for the kids to play and to use just the public space. You can see uh, these pictures, they are made by students of the school that we have here in the Superblock and um, they were working about what they expect about uh, the public space in our neighborhood and they say things like without parks there are no funny less uh, empty uh, spaces and more parks right now there are many things going on one of them is a new park in a square called Dolos Piera and then this new park is going it's going to be open the next weeks with, with a new fountain and gardening for neighbors. These three pieces of art are, are called the Guardians of the Superblock and they are made by an important artist in Catalonia, Xavier Mascaró. And these pieces are here because we have a museum of contemporary art in the Superblock and they thought that it was a good idea to put art in the street and uh, this part of the street there are no cars. Now in the superblock the noises are mostly birds and kids playing. I, I live in the, in the 11th floor. I can sleep very quietly and during the day I just can hear kids so that's, that's amazing. So we have another project that we have just opened, the superblock around the San Antonio market. That it's a very dense area in which you have a lot of people living there, a lot of people working, but also one of the main uh, markets of Barcelona. Because it was refurbished, we take the opportunity to ask the, the residents around the market if they wanted the space uh, around the market to be a, a superblock and do not have through traffic to, uh, around that area. Introducing a lot of more green areas and a lot of and, and sitting for, for resting and a little bit of, of like breath space for the market. In the past we even didn't know with the neighbors each other because we just didn't meet at the street because we were not spending time at the street, we were just passing by. But since one and a half year ago, it's very difficult to get out from the superblock because you meet everyone. You can say good morning, good afternoon, oh, your kids are growing up. We need to have more spaces like this because if we want people live, actually living in Barcelona, we have to, to, to give them a space that it's not harmful for them, not, not only with regards to emissions and all the particles that are coming from from traffic, but also with regards to noise. To be in a place that is normally filled with cars and not to have that background noise was, was pretty wonderful. And it actually reminded me a lot of Amsterdam, where it's, it's so quiet that you hear voices a block away. You can hear people dining outside. And you just don't hear that. You don't have that um, strong sense of sound in many cities, because all you hear is that loud din. I think all the cities in the world should just test this, this kind of uh, super block system. For instance, New York, for instance, London, because it's, it's working.